I believe it is now time for member statements. The member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, festival season is upon us, and over the next few months, London will become a vibrant hub of arts, culture, music, food, crafts, and community, attracting tourists, creating jobs, and stimulating our local economy. But some dark clouds are hanging over London's festivals this summer, and I don't mean the weather. The, PC, the Conservative government's delay in announcing Celebrate Ontario grants is jeopardizing the success of our amazing festivals, especially two of our biggest events. Sunfest, a glorious festival that has been bringing the world to London for 25 years, and Rock the Park, a lively four-day music festival that has raised millions for local charities over 15 years, are still waiting to hear whether their grants have been approved. After repeated questions from my staff, the Minister's Office told told us the grants would be announced last week. Yesterday, they said they are looking into it. Speaker, this is extremely frustrating for the organizers of these festivals, which annually draw visitors from across the region and beyond and generate millions in tourism spending. Without vital Celebrate Ontario funding, Sunfest and Rock the Park have had to pull back advertising and promotions, which could reduce attendance and lessen economic impact. But what is most disturbing is that Celebrate Ontario grants Grants are being rolled out in Brantford, Owen Sound, Nipissing, Muskoka, Oakville, and more, all communities represented by Conservative MPPs. Speaker, I call on this government to prove that it is not playing politics with festival funding and release London's grants today. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. Member statements. You, you just had it. You just had a statement. Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. You had an introduction. I apologize. Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, later today, we'll, we, we will be debating the Nancy Rose Act, which is intended to provide for the development and the implementation of a pediatric palliative hospital care strategy for the province of Ontario. Mercifully, the number of children who need palliative or end-of-life care is relatively small. Yet the impact of caring for a dying child has a devastating and a long-term effect on their families. This bill is named after my sister, uh, who died of leukemia in 1975. I spoke with my parents this morning, Mr. Speaker, and my, my mom and dad want me to tell you all that they're sorry they couldn't be here, but they offered this message. Here's hoping that some other parents will be helped by this and that Nancy didn't die in vain. We've received an outpouring of letters from bereaved families who feel the very same about the loss of their child. So, Mr. Speaker, for parents, bereavement never ends. I think of Mark and his daughter Jessica, Julie and her daughter Katie, Valerie and her daughter Natalie, Karen and her son Reese, Dana and her son Zoe, Heather and her son Clark, Carla and her daughter May, Danielle and her son Keaton, and Graham and his daughter Lydia. Hopefully, Mr. Speaker, we will get all party support later today on behalf of these families and on behalf of all the families whose children are facing a life-limiting or a life-ending disease. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I say thank you to the member for Hamilton West and Castor Dundas. Sorry about the confusion. Thank you. Member statements. The member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. 2019 is a significant year for St. Catharines and Niagara. Community Care St. Catharines and Thorold is celebrating 100 years of uninterrupted service and supports to less advantage in the community of St. Catharines. In the mid-80s, recognizing an unmet need, the agency opened a branch office in the neighbouring city of Thorold. What started with a single pot of soup delivered to the homes of soldiers returning from World War I in 1919 has grown to 21 services and supports to those who are struggling to make ends meet. Community care services, service, services residents from across the Niagara region who need assistance with anything from emergency services, food, medical programs, housing security, and much, much more. 
During this centennial year, community care recognizes, acknowledges, and celebrates the leadership of strong women who have led the organization through some challenging times, working with dedicated staff and volunteers to make a difference. It recognizes, acknowledges, and celebrates the support of a caring community working together in partnership to ensure that no one is denied the luxury of a roof over their heads, that everyone has the ability to tuck in a warm bed with a full tummy each and every night. With over 200 volunteers every single week, it is evident that our community members are simply there to graciously help others. Community Care's vision for a healthy, caring community with, where everyone lives with dignity and purpose is one that resonates with me deeply. Thank you to the Community Care CEO, Betty Lou Souter, and thank you to every staff member and every volunteer for continuing to expand your programs. Thank you for your continually treating our residents with dignity they deserve. And happy 100th anniversary to the community care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. For the last day, few days, I've had a lot of trouble sleeping. All I could think about is what June 1st represents. Artillery firing and destroying the sovereign seat of the Sikh people, the Akal Takht. Bullets marring the beautiful golden facade of the Harmandar Sahib, the Golden Temple. The blood of thousands of innocents filling the serene pool that surrounds it, the Sarovar. Imagine the terror when 35 years to this very day in June 1984, as Sikhs gathered to commemorate the sacrifice of our fifth guru, the Indian government launched a military invasion into the Darbar Sahib complex in Amritsar, along with more than 40 other Gurdwaras throughout Punjab, killing thousands of innocent worshippers, burning and looting our libraries, all under a complete media blackout. Imagine attending a place that was so important to the heart of your religion, your masjid during Eid, your church during Christmas, your mandir during Diwali. That is the time the Indian government chose to attack the Darbar Sahib complex. But more than just kill and destroy, in the words of Dr. Joyce Pettigrew, the Indian government's actions were to suppress the culture of a people, to attack their heart, to strike a blow at the spirit and self-confidence. Well, 35 years later, we stand unbroken. We stand tall, and we say we will never forget. Mm. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements.